Today's topic is going to be on kingdom fungi. For many years, this group was thought to be a plant. Because remember back when we first started classifying things, you either a plant or an animal. Basically, you know, if you had a cell wall, we called you a plant. If you didn't have a cell wall, we called you an animal. But once we got microscopes and all the technology, we were able to start to divide things up. So as you guys know, we now have six kingdoms. We have kingdom archaeobacteria, which are the bacteria that haven't really changed that much since the world first formed. They're found in extreme environments. We have kingdom eubacteria, which are what you think of when you think of bacteria. We have kingdom protista, which in all honesty might not be a kingdom that much longer. They are talking about taking kingdom protista, which is kind of a junkyard kingdom, and dividing it up into three different groups. We have kingdom animalia, which is obviously your animals. Kingdom planta, which are your plants. And then kingdom fungi, which are your fungus. So in the case of fungus, again, for a long time, fungi were classified as plants. And the reasons why? Well, for example, they have a cell wall. Just like plants have a cell wall, they have a cell wall. And so they look like plants, they're growing out of the ground like plants, they have a cell wall like plants. So people just call them plants. But obviously they're not green, they don't do photosynthesis. And their cell wall is made up of something different than plants. Plants have a cell wall, as you guys know, made up of cellulose, and fungi have a cell wall made up of something called chitin. And they also reproduce using these things called spores. Spores are how lower plants reproduce. They look like salt and pepper. They're these little cells with a shell, and they fall to the ground, and they crack open, and they become, they grow into either the new plant or the new fungus. And when you actually see the fungus, like this mushroom here, you're actually seeing the reproductive structures of the fungus. Most fungi are decomposers or parasites, so they actually bury themselves into whatever they're feeding off of. But to reproduce, they need to have wind or animals to pick up the spores. So when you see a fungus, you're actually seeing the reproductive structure. And if you were to pick this mushroom and shake it, these little things that look like pepper will fall out. And those peppers are the spores. So the reproductive structures have to grow you know, out of the soil so that wind or animals can pick up the spores. Like I mentioned, in the case of plants, plants have cell walls made of cellulose, which as you know is a sugar. Well, the cell walls of fungi are made of these things called chitin. And it's very interesting to scientists because bugs also have a shell made of chitin. So they're trying to figure out the correlation between a fungus and things that we call arthropods. Insects, crayfish, crabs, lobsters, shrimp. You guys know if you eat shrimp or crabs or crayfish, lobster, you peel the shell off. Well, the shell is actually the exoskeleton of that creature, and it's made from chitin. So these animals have the same structure in them that fungi have. And unlike plants that are autotrophs, fungi are heterotrophs. Remember, if you're a heterotroph, that means you make your own food. Excuse me. If you're an autotroph, that means you make your own food. Heterotrophs have to feed. Like I mentioned, most of your heterotrophs are decomposers, which means they break down things that are dead, like mushrooms, or they can be parasites, and they, leave, they feed off of living things like ringworm. Ringworm is not a worm. Ringworm is a fungus, and it's a parasite. Athlete's foot is a parasite, but all fungi have to feed off of something, so they're going to be heterotrophs. So just your basic structure, again, they are eukaryotes which means they do have a nucleus okay, and their DNA is protected. Okay. Again, nuclei are multicellular. The exception to the rule is yeast. And like I mentioned, they are gonna be working on changing the kingdoms. By the time your kids see this video, there might be eight kingdoms instead of six kingdoms. Right now we have kingdom protista. And kingdom protista is probably gonna be divided up into three kingdoms in your lifetime. And so it will no longer exist. So because Kingdom Protista has a group that we call plant-like, they're not plants, they're algae. And so they're probably gonna be Kingdom algae. And there's a group that we call animal-like that are called protozoans. And, and so that's probably gonna become a kingdom by itself, which is Kingdom Protozoa. And then there's this group called slime molds. They are fungus-like. And so they're probably gonna be a kingdom by themselves. But the only reason we still have Kingdom Protista and it hasn't been divided into three kingdoms it's because the fungus group is kind of throwing a wrench into things. And here's an example of why. To be a fungus, you have to be multicellular. But yeast are unicellular. So it's very possible that yeast will be taken out of kingdom fungi and put into kingdom protista. 
And whatever that fungus-like group becomes, and they are, haven't really figured out how to define it yet or the name, but the fungus-like creatures in Kingdom Protista are all unicellular, but they come together to make a multicellular mass. Well, all fungi are multicellular. So yeast are kind of not sure where to go because they're not really fit the definition of a fungus because it, they're not multicellular. They don't really fit the definition of this fungus-like group because they don't come together. So more on that later. But again, they are all heterotrophs, which means they're going to feed off of something. Now with fungi, as you can see here, this is not a root. This is the actual fungus itself. This is actually the fungus of a mushroom. The mushroom would be growing above the soil up here. But this is the fungus, and the fungus form these things that look like roots. But to be a root, you have to have certain layers. And these guys don't have the same layers. Now they'll hold the fungus in place, they'll absorb nutrients, so just like roots do, but roots have a little bit of a different structure. So on fungi, these things are called hyphae. So they look a lot like roots and they act like roots, but notice here with this picture, okay, if this were a root, we wouldn't have those gaps there. In the case of plants, root cells, they're square because they have a cell wall. Well, fungi cells, they're square because they have a cell wall. But in the case of, if this were a plant, these walls would be continuous. Okay? Those cell walls would be, there would be no gap in between the cell walls. In the case of fungi, the cells form a bridge so that they can pass nutrients back and forth. And so this right here, once we had the technology, was enough for us to realize, okay, this is not a root. This is not a plant. But this is something called a hyphae. It looks like a root. It acts like a root. But we can't call it a root because it does have different structures. Now, just one of these little things is called a hyphae. The whole thing together is going to have another name. And that's what we call a mycelium. So just one of these here is a hyphae. The whole mass is called a mycelium. And so here again, you can see how there's gaps in between the cells. Those gaps are called septa, or gaps in the septa, you don't need to know that. But if this were a plant, there would be no gaps. So immediately we knew that we couldn't call this a plant. It did have a different structure. But just like a plant, it's still going to anchor the plant, the fungus. It's going to hold it in place. It's also going to help feed. But in the case of roots, roots' main job is to absorb water and to absorb nutrients. In the case of fungi, they actually feed with these. Okay. A lot of fungi are what we call ex, um, external digesters. These hyphae will secrete digestive enzymes, like acids, and that will break down anything that's in the soil. And then after a given time, the hyphae then absorb whatever they just dissolved. So like athlete's foot's a parasite. And this fungus digs these guys down into your skin. And it starts to secrete digestive enzymes that actually eat your skin. So that's why if you've ever had athlete's foot, it's sore, it's red, it oozes, your skin cracks. Because the fungus is actually dissolving your skin. And then after it's given those chemicals a certain amount of time to dissolve your skin, it turns around and absorbs those nutrients. Okay, well, most roots don't do that. So hyphae work differently from roots. So again, we can't call these plants. But remember, just one of these little pieces is a hyphae. This whole thing together is mycelium. So when you see bread mold, bread mold looks fuzzy, you're sealing the mycelium. And anytime you see myco, M-Y-C-E, or M-Y-C-O, myco, that always means it's a fungus. So anytime you see myce or myco, automatically know that that's a fungus. So that should be a clue to you when you see like these really weird names. If the question's talking about an animal and myco is in the word, that cannot be the right answer because myco means fungus. Okay. And like I mentioned, fungi carry out extracellular digestion. They secrete digestive enzymes into their food, and then they will allow those enzymes to break the food down, and then they turn around and they absorb those nutrients. So here is common bread mold. What you're seeing here is the mycelium. Okay. Each little string would be a hyphae, and they land on the bread. The bread is moist. It's got water in it. And that's why bread mold, that's why bread that has mold in it gets really hard, or cheese that has mold in it gets really hard, because they suck the water out. The, the, you know, the fungus needs water too, so it's going to suck the water out of the bread, it's going to suck the water out of the cheese, and so that's why it gets really, really, really hard. 
And like we said, some fungi are decomposers. Okay? They're going to feed on dead organisms and waste. So when you see mushrooms, the fungus is actually in the soil. The fungus is actually in the log, whatever it is it's feeding off of. These are the reproductive structures. We're going to talk about those in a minute. But they have to come to the surface because the spores have to be picked up by wind, rain, you know, animals, and get carried away. Some of them are mutualist. Now, if you have a mutual relationship, both of you are working together, well, creatures in nature can have what are called mutual relationships. It's what we call a symbiotic relationship. Mutualism means that these guys are helping each other. And so what you're seeing here is this example of what's called a lichen. It looks a lot like moss, but it's actually an algae and a fungus working together. And the fungus helps feed the algae and the algae helps feed the fungus. And it's just basically a partnership that they have. And you guys know that some fungi are parasites. Okay. And this is a picture of athlete's foot. All this white that you're seeing here is the fungus growing on the person's skin. Okay. And it's going to be sore, it's going to be red, because the fungus is actually going to eat. The athlete's foot, the fungus eats your skin. And so when you have something like athlete's foot, powder, powder is just going to kill what's on the outside, but the fungus is actually under the top layer of your skin. So that's why you take, there's like lotions or... Um, sprays that your skin can absorb, or a lot of times nowadays they'll give you a medicine, so it's going to kill the fungus internally. Now, with the fungi relationships, I mentioned some of these guys are um, mutualists. They work together. And so here's an example of something called a mycorrhizae. Okay? And again, don't let the big words scare you. If you see myco, you know that is a fungus. Anytime you see rhize, rhize means it's a root. So this has something to do with a fungus and a plant. And this is actually a relationship between a fungus and the plant. What you're seeing here, okay, these are actually roots, or excuse me, those are actually the fungus. And this part right here is a taproot. Okay. And the fungus is actually breaking down nutrients and the plant can then absorb those nutrients. At the same time, the plant will release small amounts of sugar to help feed the fungus. So the fungus is helping the plant feed, and the plant's going to help the fungus feed. Here's that guy called a lichen again that I was talking about. Okay. It's a relationship between a fungus and an algae. The fungus is basically breaking down nutrients from the um, piece of wood and will feed a little bit to the algae. And the algae can do photosynthesis and make sugar that it in turn will share with the fungus. Now, fungi can reproduce asexually, and they basically clone themselves. It's called budding. So this was the mama, and it basically grows two new fungi right off of it, and it makes copies of each other. Okay. But they can also reproduce sexually. Okay. And this is how fungi are going to be classified. Okay. Fungi are going to be classified based on how they sexually reproduce. They produce haploid reproductive cells called spores in structures called sporangia. So depending on the shape of the spore, that's how we take all the different fungi and divide them up in groups. Okay. Algae get divided up based on their color. These creatures called protozoans, they're going to get divided up based on how they move. Okay. While fungi get divided up based on how what their spores look like, how, how they make the spores which they use to reproduce with. Okay. And so the sporangium produce a large number of small weight spores. When you see a mushroom, the mushroom is the sporangium. When you see a puffball, you guys know you step on it and like what looks like smoke comes out. What's coming out are all these different spores. So the part of the mushroom, or excuse me, the part of the fungus you usually see, like the bread mold, the mushroom, you're actually seeing the reproductive structure. You're seeing the sporangium. And it needs to be up at the top so that the spores can come out and the spores can fly away and the spores can land somewhere else. Okay. And so just some examples that you guys are used to. Mushrooms, molds, yeast, shelf. These are called shelf fungi. Okay. Um, puff balls. That's a puff ball. You guys know bread molds. Okay. These are, but what you see here are the reproductive structures of the fungus. And since this is the part of the fungus that we can easily see, this is how we divide fungi up into their different groups. So where it talks about diversity of fungi, it does say the root word myco represents a fungus. And on your page there, it says fungi are classified based on how they blank reproduce. That answer is sexual. 
Fungi are classified based on how they sexually reproduce and the type of spores they make. And so we divide them up into three divisions. Notice it talks about division. Okay. It's kingdom fungi, and then under kingdom, you can be a phylum or division. Scientists try to give you clues when they name creatures. Whenever you see something that says phylum, it does not have a cell wall. So it's an animal or what's called a protozoan. If you see division, that's a creature that does have a cell wall. So it's either gonna be a plant, an algae, a fungus, or some kinds of bacteria. Okay. But it's just a quick way to help you figure out, okay, what's it talking about? So anytime you see division, as you'll see, there's four groups of fungi and they all say division in front of their name. Anytime you see division, that lets you know this thing has a cell wall. So the question's talking about an animal. You might not know what division Basidio micata is, but you know it says division, so you know it has a cell wall, so it can't be the right answer. So in the case of, okay, it says cl their classification is based on how they look, reproduce, and the type of spores they make. I put classification is based on how they sexually reproduce. So however you want to fill that in is fine. But these are the th four groups. And notice they all have, well, that should be a C there. It's a typo. They all have myco in them. So they all are fungi. Okay. The first group here is called zygomycota. Okay. This is what you call bread mold. Okay. This guy here is called ascomycota, okay. what you guys know of as mushrooms and truffles. Ascomycota is called sac fungus. It, um, their spores look like little round balls, just like a grocery sack. You have basidiomycota, which are what we call club fungi. Their spores look like bowling ball pins. They're puff balls. Oh, look, neospora, <gasps> neosporin. Okay, this is what antibiotics are made of. When you, go to the when you go to the pharmacy and you get an antibiotic, antibiotics are made from a fungus. Penicillin is a fungus. Neosporin is a fungus. Now, the last group here is called deuteromycota. This group is kind, it's also called imperfect fungi because we classify fungi based on the spores they make, how they sexually reproduce. We have never seen deuteromycota sexually reproduce. They tend to only asexually reproduce. They tend to just make clones of themselves so we don't see the spores that they make. We don't see how they sexually reproduce. These three guys are named according to the spores that they make, how they sexually reproduce. This guy here is called imperfect fungi. It is a fungus. It still has chitin. It still is a decomposer. It still has hyphae. It still has mycelium. It asexually reproduces, and we have never seen it sexually reproduce. So don't say they don't reproduce. If they didn't reproduce, they wouldn't be here. Okay. They just asexually reproduce. They make clones. We've never seen them sexually reproduce. So they have to be in a group by themselves.